word. I want to bring to the to the to the floor. Table. To the floor that I learned something about. I don't know if he's my childhood hero, me? but he did have a big impact on my uh, the literature part of my uh, growing up. It's me, isn't it? Tupac. Roll da. Do you remember Roald Dahl? Dahl. Dahl. Roald Dahl? Huh? Yes, yes. I know Roald Dahl. Like, the James uh, and the and Giant Peach? Yes. And who is that one? Roald Dahl? The giant, the big B- BGF. <laughs> what is it? BFG. That, BFG. Was, that wasn't the... Um, that was Roald Dahl. I know it was Roald, but that wasn't when we were growing up. The big GF, uh, big B- BFF. Was it? <laughs> no, I mean, BFG Dahl. was. It was. Definitely. The when story... Was, yeah, no way. Yeah, BFG. Are you talking definitely. about... So when you say Roald Dahl, are you talking about the films that are made off of Roald Dahl's books? Are you talking about the actual just stories of just Roald Just the Dahl? stories. Stories. Just the stories. Yeah, mate, that definitely was. Because I had... Yeah, definitely. Um, I had a, I had basically an encyclopedia of Roald Dahl yeah. uh, stories. That was one of them. And BFG, BFG was one of them. Uh, I, 100%. When was that released? Who? Who is Roald I know. Dahl? I don't. I don't understand how... It was part of the curriculum. To read one of their books, one of his yeah. books. Curriculum schmickulum. <laughs> <laughs> I've not. That's interesting. You haven't heard. Wait, have you heard of the books though? I've heard of BGF, but I thought that was BFG. after the BFG, BBF. Nineteen eighty-two. You. Oh, BBL. you BBL. nerds. <laughs> so wait, CJ, have you heard of James and the Giant Peach? I've heard of James and the Giant Peach. That's Roald Dahl, then. I yeah. think. James and the Giant Peach was before. It was 1961. I know. That's I, what I'm saying. Like, it's so old. It's like an old, it's an old book, but we read it and it's, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't a kid that loved to read, but it's one of those books that I just, <gasps> like, I had to finish. Yes. And he also did Matilda, George's Marvelous Medicine. Did you read that one? Charlie and the oh, Chocolate Factory. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Do you remember oh. that one? Yeah, he did all those books. Each. No. He had, he had a... <gasps> He had a big impact on our childhood. I, we didn't the even twits, know. The twits. The twits. I watched. I, I watched a few of the movies, but I, didn't, I don't remember reading the books. The twits. Yeah, I remember. The I twits. think the thing that sticks with me most about his is less. It's weirdly, it's less the stories and more the the illustrations. It's a yes. very classic yeah. Roald Dahl yes. illustration style. Yeah, yeah, you always knew if it was one of his. Uh, his books because of the illustrations. Actually, who did the illustrations? Oh, it's Quentin Blake. There you go. Ah. Quentin Blake was the illustrator. So actually, Quentin Blake had more of an impact. Is the hero? Time. Yeah. <laughs> the <Nolda. laughs> yeah. I wanna. I wanna. Um. I wanna share this video. Oh, okay. This video. Because I don't know about Rolda. I don't know much I mean, about I him. I don't know either. But then this guy. I like that you wrote his name down as Ronald as well. Yeah. Where? No, what? that's that's auto correct on, again. On. Where are you looking? Where's Ronald? Uh. <laughs> Any secret agent that slept that? with somebody either as part of their cover. Are you ready for me to destroy your childhood? This is Roald Dahl, author of such beloved children's books as Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, The BFG, The Witches, George's Marvelous Medicine, and Matilda. This is Roald Dahl during the Second World War. After he was injured during a mission, he was no longer able to serve as a fighter pilot, so he was moved to America, where he became part of MI6, the British Intelligence Service. What? His mission was to keep an eye on the American political situation, because they were still basically isolationists, and also to grow pro-British sentiment among the Washington political class. And how did he do this? Well, he gained political and social influence by having affairs with politicians' wives, their adult daughters, staffers, and also one congresswoman. Like seriously, imagine all the sex and violence of a James Bond story, but without the violence. In fact, he even worked with Ian Fleming in MI6 and was probably one of the influences for the character. Think about that next time you read The Witches. Oh my goodness. What's... So, Roald Dahl was a secret agent? That's what it said on the video, yeah. Mind blown. <laughs> I, I actually thought though. the guy was going to say... So he went over there and his mission was to spy on the Americans what, mm. and gain political awareness from blah, 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 blah. And the way mm. he did this was to write children's books, but he was actually undercover whilst writing the children's books. That's <laughs> what I thought he was going to say. That would have been better. Mind, 
my mind went to an even darker place. Oh. I felt like it was a kiddly, a kitty fiddler or something. Oh. oh, no. Oh, gosh. To be fair, the way that like, whole thing was set that, up, I yeah. thought that was... Uh, that did cross my mind because it did <gasps> set up like he was yeah. about to ruin our childhood in terms of... Yeah. He's another person you're not allowed to like anymore. Like, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I can, I can see that. I yeah. can see that. But, but it still yeah, had a hell of a spin like, on... Um, uh, like, he was a spy and he did all this stuff and, like, so, uh, like the James Bond... Not was based loosely on one of the um one of the uh characters. What, what, no, it was based on like James Bond was loosely based on one of his uh, adventures. Like he was talking to the creator of James Bond, and then he was writing books. I don't know. It was just like I can't I can't put everything together. Like it doesn't make sense. At what point did he go? You know what? I'm gonna start making kids books. Or did he always <laughs> have the the like? Was he always like, you know what? I'm I'm swooning these women and I'm having drinks and I'm manipulating the politicians. But at at my core, I want to write kids' books. Maybe he had children well, and then he enjoyed reading to them and then he thought I could make better books than this. Maybe he was using the kids' books to get in with the mothers <laughs> of the politicians. <laughs> <laughs> There's for, for, for some for some sexy time. <laughs> Well, there's Possibly? two things I'd say about this. The first thing, and this is just to consider, is I don't know who that guy is on TikTok. I have no idea what his credentials are, but I didn't just believe it because he said it. Like, there was no evidence in what he said except for two pictures, no, which I is know. not evidence. No, I know. Uh, yeah, so, 100%, 100%, but just to follow that narrative. But then if you do follow that narrative, yeah. I would also pay attention to the timeline that you gave. Yeah. Because he said this was related to the Second World War, mm. which is in the 40s. Whereas we know, like, James of the Giant Peach, which was one of his earlier stories, is in the 60s. 60s, and yeah. And then he wrote up until, what, the 80s. So there's a good 20-year gap in between him doing this stuff and him writing children's books. So yeah. I think it's just he got older <laughs> and just <laughs> moved on with life. <laughs> it was the children, I'm telling you. You're very good. Because, like, we remember we watched, uh, Mr. In- uh, we watched The Incredibles. Mm. And um, like they're superheroes, right? And then all of a sudden the government goes, we don't need them anymore, too many lawsuits. Yeah. I just find it hard to transition between being uh, a, like, you know, a player that had a very adventurous life that li- and, then, and then turning and then creating books. that Not to any books, but children's books. To children's books. I wonder if um, some of his missions are in the actual stories. He began writing um, his career... His began his writing career with short stories. Yeah. Um, did a, a collection. Um, um, I wonder if it says. I don't know. Oh, he died in 1990. How old was he? How, how old was he? Um, 74. 70. How did he... Sub- 74, 1940. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Go saying if the adds up. Quick math. Quick he went math. to... Um, he, his Alexander, mom, add it up quickly. <laughs> He'd have been in his 20s. <laughs> his mum offered to pay tuition at Oxford or Cambridge Uni. Mm. And Dar's response was... No, thank you. I want to go straight from work, straight from school to work for a company that will send me to wonderful faraway places like Africa or China. Wow. Um, then he graduated and went on an expedition to Newfoundland. Then he went. He worked for a Shell Oil Company in Tanzania, Africa. Cool. <laughs> this guy's had a crazy life. And then he joined the Air Force. Training in Kenya. Yeah. And then he was a fighter pilot. This is wild. And then when he was serving in the Mediterranean, he crash landed in Egypt, Alexandria. <laughs> and that land and that plane crash left him with serious injuries to his skull, spine, and hip. And he needed a, a hip replacement and two spinal surgeries. Wow. Then he was transferred to Washington, D.C., where he became an assistant air attache. What's that? Why is he not? Why doesn't he have a movie? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. This guy's unreal. He's got a crazy life. 
We need to pitch this. He is Bond. Yeah. <laughs> Netflix, are you listening? <laughs> Netflix, do Ronald Da. <laughs> 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 Ronald Duck. I thought you were about to say Ronald Duck. <laughs> it doesn't say how, like, after that, like, yeah. I yeah, guess, like, wait, even if you if you think about the time as well, like, so if he was 74 and 90, he'd have been 1916, he's born, so. 16, 80, yeah, 1916, which is quite... Quite, quite a different time to what we know. Yeah. Like your life, I think your life at that time follows more of the path of randomness. Yeah. Compared to what we had, like we can direct our lives a lot more now. Yeah. Because we're just aware of more things. Whereas I feel like then, for example, what jobs you do, you sort of just fall into a lot of things. Yeah. Right. It is you stay so like, in certain lanes. Yeah. So his his life going down these tangents. Like, joining the Air Force, for example, would have been quite a, not typical, but like there's more people per capita probably was in the Air Force then than there are now. Mm. So that would have been like, oh, yeah, yeah, I could join the Air Force. But then as a consequence of joining the Air Force, like a lot of crazy things happened to him. Mm. I'd love to meet him at his peak. You can't, he passed away. Yeah, I'd love to. Like, I'd love to meet him when he was at his, like, <laughs> when he was picking up the chicks and, like, like being suave with but, all the politicians and just uh, uh, how he uh, went about on. being a spy and he, stuff. That would have been crazy. He had multiple back surgeries and hip surgery, correct? That's what it says, mm -hmm. yeah. The whole spy thing and, and wounding of the um, politicians' wives seems a little bit more far-fetched now. I think after when he was part of the military thing, he met a British novelist, C.S. Forrester, who was also working to aid the British war effort. And then that Forrester guy was also writing propaganda for the Allied cause. Mm. And then the Saturday Evening Post asked Forrester to write a story based on Dahl's flying experiences. And Forrester asked Dahl to write some RAF anecdotes so that he could put it into this like publish, uh, to publish thing, I guess. Um, and maybe that's where Dahl first started writing, writing anecdotes or something. Mm. And then that work introduced Dahl to the espionage stuff. What? what, what? <laughs> are you connecting your own dots here or no. are you reading something? It said, this work introduced she, Dahl to espionage and the activities of the Canadian spymaster William Stevenson, known by the code name intrepid <laughs> <laughs> i love this that love is a this. cool and then Dahl name. supplied intelligence from washington from washington to the prime minister winston churchill he said my job was to try help winston <laughs> to get on with the fdr i don't know what the fdr you're winnie i got and some tell winston what What's was in the old for? boy's mind <laughs> that's what he said um roosevelt oh. roosevelt upon the war's conclusion Dahl held Dahl held the rank of a temporary wing commander. Post-war life, he married actress Patricia Neal.